Hi everyone, Sandman here. Today's video is brought to you by a donation from John T, and here's what he has to say. I have a video request, Sandman. Can you cover the general subject of young women aged 16 to 18 today and their life path? My background is I'm actually trying to talk to my 17-year-old sister who lives in Atlanta, Georgia. And my father and I are both in New York, and I have a different mother. My sister says that she wants to get into forensics, but has a 2.5 GPA and very poor PSAT scores, particularly in math and science. She takes the SATs in December, and I don't think that her score will be all that great. So I told her, you need to find another interest which is more realistic given your grades. She says that she has none, and that you're not helping. And long story short, her mother is basically not a great parent. There's been some neglect in the past, and one incident in particular, where she sent her, when she was 12 years old, to school with 15 degree February weather, with no jacket while walking through the ghetto. And this is all caught by a private investigator in a car, with my dad and aunt. Of course, it wasn't enough evidence for my father to be granted custody. And she refuses to leave her mother after high school graduation, because the mother is a loser that doesn't want to work. There's some more depth and background to this situation. But let's say on top of the generational differences, I am 28 and my sister is 17, it's hard to communicate with her due to the distance and her mother telling her lies about my father and me. And I'm sure she's also trying to pull on emotional strings to get sympathy from her and abuse the mother-child connection. How can we break her free after she graduates? My sister also wants my father to support her mother financially, and it's already been clearly defined that that will never happen again. My father is willing to provide housing for my sister while she goes to community college due to her poor GTA average, and I will be using my social slash professional connections to help her get ahead. But none of this is on the table if she remains in Atlanta, Georgia with her mother, or attempts to include her mother in this offer. How do you talk to a 17-year-old female to get her to take life seriously? I don't want her coming up to me when she's my age asking me for money and assistance. It will make me look bad to my professional contacts and could potentially be used as blackmail material if I have basically become highly successful. And I can see the news headlines now. John T, why aren't you taking care of your little sister? Cue the feminist shaming. And this is why we are trying to proactively get her back on the right track. By some sort of miracle she hasn't gotten pregnant yet but probably because her mother is a conniving con artist that wants to trap a man with money down in the South. Aside from the potential shaming from family and peers, she has the potential to do better, but not while she's with her mother. And how do you talk to kids these days and get them to take life seriously? Lastly, I was wondering if over the next few months you could develop a hand-picked list of reading materials, books and not just articles, and host the list somewhere online. I'm sure other viewers as well would like to discover more authors in contemporary red pill or MGTOW literature. I think once we have some notable modern day writers, even if they're just fictional, it will add credibility and legitimacy to the MGTOW phenomenon. Thank you. Well, John T, thanks for your comments and questions. First, let me talk about your sister. Teenage girls like her are easy to impress in most cases. Influencing her probably won't be a problem, as you say that you live in New York. And I'm not sure if you mean New York State or New York City, but for my purposes, I'll assume that you mean New York City. Attracting a teenage girl to New York is an easy thing to do. And when she finishes high school, many of her friends will probably go off to college, and she will lose some of the sisterhood that she has down there. Why not invite her to New York City in the summer? Show her around, take her out, possibly introduce her to a few of your female friends, if you want to get her to bond with them. Lure her away from the strip malls and highways of Atlanta, Georgia, for the tall buildings and subways of New York. Make her feel like she's actually using you by staying in the city, but at the same time tempt her away from her mother with the promise of city lights, nightlife, and culture. That's what I would do. But I would do it with caution. You don't know what kind of poisons her mother has already filled into her head. She may have already said that you and your father might tempt her to run away, and she might have already sown the seeds of guilt into her heart. Mothers telling lies about fathers is a customary motherly behavior in most cases. She will do everything she can to influence her if her plan is, as you say, to help your sister trap a rich man in the South and become a Southern Belle. Young teenage girls these days have a precarious life path. Smartphones have opened up the available number of men for them to date, which simultaneously increases their likelihood of riding the cock carousel, which can make them emotionally unstable in their early to mid-twenties which is the period in their lives when many of them are starting to think about getting married. And there really isn't anything you can do about this particular situation. 
teenage girls need their phones. It's like having a landline or ink and paper in past generations. And when I was in my early 20s, the women that I dated were from small towns, because I saw how big city girls were corrupted. Then I realized that girls in the country were more sex crazed than the girls in the city, and they were just as big as sluts as city girls. Unfortunately, today's teenage girls seem to be all corrupted, and it's impossible to shelter them from the world unless you live without electricity somewhere in the middle of nowhere, or you're basically part of an Amish community. And with regards to life paths, most teenage girls dream of traveling and meeting men with sexy foreign accents. This desire for teenage girls to travel is why I say lure her away to New York City. It's the status of living in New York that will keep her there and keep her away from the clutches of her mother. And the only status she can have in Atlanta is connected to marrying a rich guy. And that's why her mother is pushing this particular agenda. Don't you think that she's already worried that you and your father will try to take her away at some point? You already tried to get an investigator to prove her as an unfit mother. And like you said, your father is willing to provide housing to her. In the end, I think the situation will play out in your favor. Your sister probably won't get into forensics, and she'll probably get a dead-end job, and then take your father up on the offer of housing, and she'll go to school for something else. Her mother is probably responsible for keeping her dumb, so that she can be more easily manipulated. Intelligent children see their parents for who they are, and not the illusions that they project. And the only way it seems to talk to teenage girls these days, and get through to them, is if you actually take their life experiences seriously, and speak their own language. Their language is YouTube videos and their smartphone technology. Girls these days look up to women like Paris Hilton and Jenna Marbles, women that are famous for doing absolutely nothing of value. Unfortunately, that's the type of superficial garbage that many teenage girls fall for these days. Teenage girls are obsessed with selfie culture as well as Instagram. And this is not different than girls gazing in the mirror in past generations. Except the selfie is like sharing that mirror image with the rest of the world, stylizing it and adding embellishments. When women can get male attention on tap these days, it's hard to get them to think about schoolwork and their futures. Everything is about instant gratification, and it's hard to fight against the current. And I hate to say this, but more girls are being seduced by lower-end jobs with the promise of quick cash more than ever. And at the same time, many young women are extending their adolescence by going to college for dumb degrees. Is forensic sciences really in high demand? Are there lots of jobs available in that field to begin with? It seems that with 65% of college students being women these days, even if your sister gets into school by some sort of miracle, is there any chance in hell that she will even get hired for a job after finishing school? I know it's an overused cliché, but you can always attract more flies with honey instead of vinegar. And that's what the promise of a higher education has become for women these days. Perhaps she can go into something that's more practical. I know for men there are often trades that they can fall back into, but what do women really do with regards to career futures if they aren't intelligent and don't have good grades? Teenage girls only have two options, higher educations, or their fathers, brothers, and husbands bailing them out. Otherwise, they're stuck doing shitty retail jobs, and that's about it. Much has been said before about teenage guys and how they're making up a smaller and smaller portion of the higher education market. But very little has been said about the fact that without a higher education, very few women have a chance to enter the middle class. Unless, of course, they're born into a family with means, or they marry a man with money. And with more men making less money than ever, and a bad economy, women have no choice but to get into debt and hope that the gamble pays off and that they become professionals and do something with their lives. It's interesting to see that both of these strategies that I've outlined for teenage girls and their futures are strategies that her mother and father want for her. Your father and yourself want her to go the route of higher education, and her mother wants her to basically marry a guy that's rich, and there doesn't seem to be any middle ground in this situation. So if those are the only two options that teenage girls have these days, it's kind of sad. Either they marry a guy to bail them out, or they hope they win the lottery in their educations. I work with many women that have small businesses. Some are successful, and most are not. And that's yet another option that women are taking increasingly these days. But becoming an entrepreneur is usually a losing proposition for most women. Because from my own observations, they would rather pay for the talents of others than learn to do things on their own, even the ones that have actually gone to college. Your question, John, how do you talk to a 17-year-old female and get her to take life seriously, is a very tough one. Because you have to rationalize with her, and it doesn't sound like your sister has much of a talent for reason, especially considering the fact that you mentioned that her math and science skills are very poor. If you suspect that her mother is already preparing for this particular contingency of her not getting ahead in her education, 
So maybe that's why she's already planning to have her married away to a rich guy. Hopefully what I've said has got you to think about this situation under a different light, and see the dilemma facing teenage girls in our society. Without the trades to fall back on, their options in many cases are very limited, and rather limited compared to boys. And many of them don't want to take the initiative either. And that's all I've got to say for today. And in case anyone's wondering why I'm choosing to depict young seemingly teenage girls in a club, it's because here in Canada the drinking age is actually 19, as opposed to 21 in the United States. That's yet another useless fact, unless of course you live near the Canadian border, and you're 19 years of age. Then you can get drunk, and drink up here two years early. But I guess many of you already know that, as well. And you probably also know that liquor is twice as expensive here in Canada as it is in the United States. Anyways, thank you John T for your donation, and at some point in the future, I'd like to do a top 10 male MGTOW book related video. And don't worry about MGTOW, and don't worry about the new MGTOW book by Paul Elam, that won't de and don't worry about the new MGTOW book by Paul Elam, that will definitely not be on the list. Thanks again to everyone for taking your daily dose of red pills, so enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.